Uh, my name is Nelly Cheboy. I am the founder of TechLet Africa. So at TechLet Africa, we empower communities to, I don't, how do we even say that? We just, uh, we build computer labs in rural African schools in the hope of empowering communities to adopt digital technology and, uh, you know, disrupt poverty. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I'm actually recording in Chicago right now. And if you're watching this, I'll be in Kenya by the time you watch this. I am flying to Kenya tomorrow, which is on a Thursday to go start building a school. And I know that uh, the, the topic for this, this month is choose to challenge. And we're talking about how women can, can challenge each other, ch challenge the status quo and you know, just <laughs> make the world a better place. I would love to share my screen and talk talk more about what we're doing at TechLed Africa, a little bit of my back uh, backstory of how I got here and everything else in between. Yeah, so I hope you all can see my screen. Um, so with TechLed Africa, we're just spreading leverage with technology and I'm going to go a little bit more on why that is important. So here are some pictures of my, my life. Uh, on the top right here is a picture of my mom. My mom uh, was a street food vendor and think of it as lemonade stand, but less fancier. So she would wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and bake chapatis and mandazis and sell them that during the day. So on a good day, she would only make $2 a day on a bad day should be at a loss. And with that kind of profit margins, she wasn't able to, to just well sustain us. So the house we grew up in, right here, I see it in the background, was made of tin roofs. It wasn't, it wasn't safe uh, to live there. We didn't have running water, we didn't have electricity. I, I used to go to, uh, to my neighbors or to the hospital nearby to go study. So we didn't, at night, there was no, no light. We used kerosene lamps. And uh, we obviously struggled with food. And in Kenya, uh, parents pay for, for their kids' high school. And my mom could not afford to send us through, through high school. So most of the time, I spent most of my time um, going home to collect tuition. And watching my mom struggle, um, struggle to raise us and, and just struggle to put uh, uh, my sisters and I, so I have three sisters through school, really inspired me to, to want to make life better for her. And, and I, 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 would make, I made a promise to her that when I grow up, I'll take care of her and she, she will live like a queen. I even had a song that went like, Mkono wangu mdogo we, hawezi kufanya kazi. Nikikuwa mkubwa we, nitakusaidia. Utapumzika. And the song, uh, it's a Swahili song that translates to my hands are so tiny, I cannot do anything. But when I grow up, you're going to live like a queen. And so the only thing I could deliver that promise was to work really hard in school. So despite having trouble with tuition, I graduated top of my class from primary school, went to a really good high school. So schools in Kenya are boarding schools. Uh, went to a really good high school. And from there, I was at the top of my class again, which uh, landed me a full scholarship at Agustana College in Illinois. This was back in 2012. When I got to Agustana College, uh, I was amazed by just the amount of resources that people have here. But the coolest thing is that I could, I could actually, I could walk through a work study program. So I got a job at the cafeteria and also got uh, some janitorial work. I was able to earn $8 an hour. So back in 2012, 2013, and I saved up for one year. And a year later, I flew, I flew to Nairobi, the capital city of, of, uh, of uh, Kenya and bought a truckload of furniture. So I bought all the furniture that you see here. I brought a truckload of furniture and I also went to Goodwill beforehand, bought some fancy dresses. And when I got, I, when I got home, I just like moved my family out of that, that, that house. And I don't know if you have noticed, but you can see the pictures of our stories before this house were all outside because we were so embarrassed to take any pictures inside. And for the first time we were taking pictures inside the house. So here's a picture of us um, 
in, in the new house. It was really exciting moving day. We had electricity, we had uh, running water, we had a latrine on site. Here's a picture of my mom now. She lives at her own land. So she has her own house with water and electricity and uh, she doesn't even have to walk anymore. So we, uh, the three sisters are taking care of her. This is my sister, Sharon. Um, uh, that she has, uh, she's running the school that I'm going to talk about later. And my sister Barbara has her own business doing a veterinary shop. And here's a picture of my grandma. My grandma never went, to, never went to school, but she always wanted to graduate. So after I graduated college, I, I gave her my graduation gown, and she still wears it today. She was really happy. <laughs> um, so after moving my family out of poverty, I started thinking of ways I can improve my community. Education meant a lot to me, and I, I noticed that I could just um, I could start I could start by building a school and making this resource easily available to to my community. I only needed six thousand dollars to get started, so I saved up for another two years. And in 2015, so three years into America. I started with these four tiny classrooms. So very tiny classrooms. The kids moved in in 2016, and uh, it was really exciting. <laughs> uh, around the same time when I was building a school, I uh, the school I also discovered computer science. So before that, I, I'd, I'd only used a computer when I, I first used a computer when I was 18 when I was applying to colleges. Before that, I had no idea how to even use a keyboard, how to, how to do anything really. And when I got to Augustana College, I was majoring in chemistry. And, and so, uh, and then I needed to take an intro to, uh, to computer science for, an intro to, yeah, an intro to Java for my computer science major. And I was just really impressed <laughs> at how impactful, like, you know, writing code was. And this was uh, as a junior in college, so it was pretty late. So I decided to drop my chemistry major, switch to um, switch to computer science. But then I, I continuously think I continually thought about the people in my community, the kids in my community that are growing up without access to technology, and and kept thinking about what what they, they have to contribute to the global economy without access to this such an impost, in, uh, important tool. And so after the school was built, I started looking into um, collecting computer donations from corporations and individuals and, and bringing this resource to, uh, to my community. So instead of waiting until you're 18 to first use a computer, I wanted to bring that number down to like, you know, if you're like three years old or two years old. And this is a picture that you're seeing here is, we collected computers from companies and individuals. Um, we flew to, to Kenya and we started working with, with the kids. Uh, here are some more pictures uh, from the lab. So here's a picture of Sheila doing tax math. Uh, so just um, uh, doing math on, on this game called tax math. So it's a, it's a shooter game where you, the numbers are falling and uh, it's some, uh, uh, you do some math and depending if you type the answer correctly, you, anyway, she's, she's doing math. Uh, more pictures of the kids just waiting in the, in the area for their turn. Here's a picture of my co-founder Tyler and I teaching some of the adults music and so on and so on. So really, um, really impactful. When we were there, we worked with over 1200 kids over the course of five months. And it was amazing to see kids like, like him that I never used a computer before, but three days later, they were very, uh, um, they were very competent at it. So our, um, we, we also noticed that it's really hard to, it would be really hard to train all the teachers to, to start teaching this resource. But instead we worked on making our UI intuitive so that any kid can come in and just press enter, enter, and they're ready to get started on our, on our program. And here's a picture of Reed Cholimo. Uh, she's she's seven years old, and all she wanted to do was teach. She just wanted to teach others, and so many kids were like her there, where they they learn and then they start they start sharing their knowledge with other kids. So we didn't even need to be in the in the room as long as the computers were set up correctly. The kids knew what to do, and they'll they'll work with each other to uh, to play and use the computer. 
um, yeah, so that's the idea too. Uh, our, um, we have this self-directed curriculum where a kid can just come in and interact with this program. They're supplementing what they're learning in, in school, but they're also becoming tech literate. Uh, we, uh, we also have our own intranet server. So because of lack of internet, we, um, we, we have our own server, which is just a laptop and a router. And the server has, you know, login credentials where kids can come in and log in and pick up where they left off the day before. It also enables enable us to have multiplayer games. And I'm going to show you a video of how it looks like in the next slide. Oh, this is not the right. Oh, it looks like I don't have a video. <laughs> I'll get the video right in. But um, so, uh, in, the, in the multiplayer game, we have uh, eight kids. One of them is the server, the rest are the clients, and they are joining in. Uh, they are all joining in as the clients, but the server is responsible for making sure that the kids can uh, type their name correctly, that they can, um, that, that they can, they can uh, that the internet is connected. So, so before they start playing, they're debugging the computers, making sure that the network is connected, the ethernet is connected, the router is working. And it's so really cool to just see kids who do not know anything uh, about computers to like two weeks later talking about network, server, debugging. So it's such amazing to witness. Uh, so one night when I was, uh, when we were running the program, this lady Faith came to me and she, she was dropping off uh, her son. Uh, she wanted to see if we had daycare. So she worked at the near Bering plantation, Cecil plantation, making uh, 50 cents a day. And she wanted to see if she can drop her kid off so she can, you know, go work at the plantation. But she was also wondering if we had any kind of vocational training. She was, she was really sad and, and she was lamenting about the fact that she never went to school. So she was like, I never went to school. I'm not so lucky. She was really embarrassed about her story. And she was asking, is there anything here for me like braiding hair or tailoring that I can, I can learn and I can, um, and I can, I can earn more income and feed my, and take care of my son instead of this 50 cents a day. So hearing her story just broke my heart and and there's nothing I could do. The only thing I had was a computer. So I just I just gave her this uh, basic game called Mr. Potato Guy. And all you do is you drag a potato and as you're dragging it, it's saying some words. So you're learning phonics that way, like Scott, I. But on the back of my head, I kept thinking of ways uh, I could accommodate other segments of the population. Yes, we have an awesome curriculum going on for the kids, but what about uh, the older folks? What about the high school students? And so we started thinking of ways we can, we can do that. So with kids, we can continue to provide continuous access. So the kids that are growing up in rural Africa are growing up with access, access to digital technology. And, and pretty soon there'll be no difference with someone growing up in rural Africa and someone growing up in, I don't know, American suburbs. Uh, with the high school students, we were thinking of working with them to provide them um, uh, digital training tools. So. Uh, WordPress building, um, uh, social media marketing, data entry, enough for them to get jobs on these freelancing platforms like Upwork and, and Fiverr. And how that would look like would be someone moving from making a dollar a day to making like eight dollars an hour on these freelancing platforms. They already have uh, the, the technical know-how and we're just coming to the, to the lab using our curriculum, we're opening up the digital economy to them. When I look at these freelancing platforms, I see a lot of people from you know, Pakistan, India, and it would be really cool to also see people from my village also on these platforms making money and um, unlocking their potential that way. But then for the adults, the much older folks that never got a chance to go to school, we, um, we were thinking of providing them adult literacy. So teaching them basic math and, and English and, um, uh, teaching them basic financial literacy, but also teaching them vocational training, like braiding hair and tailoring. With this kind of training, they could uh, start their own business locally or be employed by some other person who is doing those businesses and more income and spark this economic growth in the community. So with this kind of approach, we are targeting, we're looking at every segment of the population, realizing what they need 
and, and empowering them in them in a way that we are holistically transforming communities. And um, uh, with this template, we can go to different villages and do the same, right? So uh, instead of handing people money, we are investing in their, in their skills, providing them with this resource so they can just unlock their potential. And we needed we needed a bigger school for that. We needed a much bigger, <laughs> a much bigger building to to be able to provide that. And so uh, we started sketching, and this is the building we're building right now. Uh, it's four floors. The second floor, the first floor will continue to be the school. The second floor will be the digital lab provided by TechLet Africa, the organization. The third floor will be providing the adult literacy and the library and. For that, we are partnering with Read Across Africa, another awesome nonprofit that builds library in Africa to provide adult literacy in the library. And for the fourth floor, we are partnering with another organization called Vocation, um, called uh, NIMA Project. And NIMA Project um, provides those uh, vocational training like braiding hair and tailoring. And um, so this is how the buildings will look like completed. Um, so we started, uh, Right, uh, a few weeks after talking to Faith, I started working on um, on sketching, and this is a picture of me in the foundation. So, uh, it's a pretty tall foundation. Um, here's a here's some pictures uh, through the construction, uh, and here here's a picture of the kids moving in. So we have the first floor completed, the school, the school completed, and when uh, when I'm when I go there, so. By the time you're watching this, I'll be there already. I'll be starting on, on, on the other floors uh, with providing those projects. <laughs> Here's just a picture of us keeping up with the times, uh, of us picking up computers and yeah, thank you. But uh, I think one more thing that I, I can say before I open up for questions is that the, the goal for the, um, the presentation is choose to challenge, right? What can we do as women uh, to just challenge the status quo? And there's something that my mom used to tell me all the time, which is leave a place better than you found it. And when I think, um, what, it's just one thing that has stuck with me. It's it's easy to look at yourself right now and think that oh I, you know I'm not, I what what can I? I'm just a junior developer. I'm just a I'm just starting out on my career. There's nothing I can do to help anyone. There's nothing that I can I can provide for someone. But but look at what is challenging in your life right now and and think and think about the next person who's coming after you. Think about how you can make their life much better just because you experience what they're experiencing right now. So for me, I grew up without technology. I grew up without uh, access to computers. And when I finally became a software engineer, I just realized how how stressful, how hard it was to become a, a software engineer, um, a software engineer right now without any access to technology growing up. And so I set up to start TechLed Africa and provide that access. And, and, and so for me, kids that are growing up in my community right now are not going to be experiencing what I experienced growing up. And and if you think of, of that mindset, then uh, then you'll find your, you'll find that you have so much power, you have so much um, leverage in your hand that you can empower people who are coming before you. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It could be like as simple as leaving good comments on your code base, as simple as cheering on your friend who is starting her own business, as simple as pointing out injustice and saying that is not right. You should not be saying that about her. Just something like um, by just being a, a keeper, looking around you, thinking how you can make someone someone's life better, how you can empower them to realize their potential, and and by doing that, you are you're just slowly changing the life, and you know you're, you're choosing to challenge the status quo. So thank you.